Before Andy Reid came to the Chiefs, he was known as the coach who just couldn't get it done. Perhaps even labeled as a choker. Losing in heartbreaking fashion many, many times. Oh God, my wife's choking! Luckily for him, he went to Kansas City and the rest is history. Not all great coaches had the best situations. The good fortune of having Patrick Mahomes or the best luck. They could coach their asses off, but just somehow didn't win the big one. Today, we'll take a look at legendary NFL coaches who never got to raise the Lombardi. Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo. Don Coryell. Don Coryell changed the way NFL offenses operate. His famous Air Coryell took the league by storm, with Dan Fouts airing it out to Charlie Joyner and Kellen Winslow. Senior, not the asshole Kellen Winslow. The spread offenses and deep routes caused havoc on defenses, instantly turning cornerbacks into burnt toast. Coryell was recently inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame, but unlike others ahead of him on this list, he never even reached the Super Bowl. He only won three playoff games in his 14 NFL seasons, never winning more than one game in a postseason. Offensive guru Mike Martz called Coryell the father of the modern passing game. He won NFL Code of the Year with the St. Louis Cardinals, but never even won a playoff game with them. Unfortunately for him, he coached in an era where passing and scoring could be shut down with more clutching and grabbing than Epstein Island. Big hits and defense dominated his era. And he would have likely done well in the modern NFL where QBs aren't even allowed to be breathed on. Bud Grant. Bud Grant was the first person to be inducted into both the CFL and the Pro Football Hall of Fames. In his 28 seasons coaching in North America, he guided his teams to the postseason 20 times, reaching the championship game 10 times. And good on Bud, he won four of those 10, but none were the Super Bowl. Yep, Bud went four and two in CFL Grey Cups and became the first NFL coach to lose four Super Bowls. Damn, son. Shout out to Grant, who was drafted into the NBA by the Minneapolis Lakers and the Philadelphia Eagles of the NFL, first choosing basketball and winning an NBA title with the Lakers. But no NFL titles with those great Vikings teams. Also, makes sense that he coached in the CFL because Bud Grant did not give a fuck about the cold. Dan Reeves. The coaching skills of Dan Reeves were clearly visible. Cowboys legendary coach Tom Landry made Reeves a player coach before he was even done playing. Yeah, imagine that, though Peyton Manning in his later years was pretty much the head coach. Speaking of the Broncos, at the ripe age of 37, Reeves became the coach of the Denver Broncos, traded for John Elway, and reached the Super Bowl three times in four years. He also took the Atlanta Falcons to their first Super Bowl. He had some great teams. Surely he got close to winning a chip. Nah. He got blown out all four times by scores of 39 to 20, 42 to 10, 55 to 10, and 34 to 19. Even though he did win a ring as a player, his four defeats as a coach are what he is remembered for. In all, Reeves participated in nine total Super Bowls with two as a player, three as an assistant, winning a second Super Bowl, and those four losses as a head coach. He is one of only two NFL head coaches to win 200 career games and not be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The other, Marty Schottenheimer. Marty Schottenheimer is number eight on the all-time list of NFL head coaching wins with exactly 200 regular season wins. During the 1990s, no coach had more wins than him and he made the playoffs in 11 of his 15 seasons as a head coach, but he never won the big one, never even reaching it. At the same time, his regular season record is 613 for his career. His playoff record is a disgusting 278 percentage. Or is that 27%, 28%? In his last season with the Chargers, he went 14 and two before being fired. I'm sure that worked out well for the Chargers. Now, old Marty has his hardware winning the NFL Coach of the Year in 2004 and 2011, and the United Football League Championship with the Virginia Destroyers. Yes, there was a UFL before the UFL. Schottenheimer was often the victim of his own rigidity and stubbornness, and he made it difficult on ownership to put up with him. To his credit, the teams he moved on from haven't won shit. Jeff 
Fisher. Now, while all the coaches on this list have been notable for being great coaches, Jeff Fisher is notable for being as mid as your mom. Probably still would though, probably would. He was a head coach in the league for 22 seasons and is tied with Reeves and Bill Belichick for the most career losses in NFL history. He is the only head coach to have his teams moved twice while he was coaching them. But in 1999, his fifth season as the Oilers head coach slash Titans, he took the Titans to their first and still only Super Bowl appearance. And for those 25 and younger who do not remember the Titans, came a mere one yard short from victory. He then leveraged that to a few more years in Nashville and then to St. Louis where he earned the nickname Mr. Seven and Nine. I'm not fucking going seven and nine. Like many others on this list, he got his fair share of hardware, including the 1978 National Championship playing for USC and a Super Bowl as a player on the 85 Bears. Some of you do not remember that. I did not, but failed to raise the Lombardi in his 22 years as a head coach. I think everyone knew Fisher was average, but did you know this next guy didn't win a Super Bowl? Paul Brown. The founder of the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals is one of the NFL's most notable coaches of all time, but he never won a Super Bowl. This is the part where you ask if he even coached during the Super Bowl era. Well, fuck yeah, he did. He coached the Bengals for eight years during the Super Bowl era, never winning the big one. The Bengals made the playoffs three times with Brown as their leader, losing all three times. Now, Brown did win the AAFC title four times from 1946 to 49 and the NFL championship in 1950, 54, and 55 with the Browns. History buffs love to bring up NFL championships, which is fair, but we stand the Lombardi around here. Once he retired from coaching after 45 years, he stayed with the Bengals franchise as their team president where they reached the Super Bowl twice, losing both times. It's also wild that Paul Brown used to own the Browns who were named after them, then he sold them, then started a team just to spite his old team that bear his name. And neither of those teams have won a Super Bowl. Before we get to our final coach, shout out to Jim Mora, who had a 125 and 106 record in 15 seasons in the NFL, but was 0-6 in the playoffs. Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Yes, in the postseason, he couldn't do diddly poo. And finally, our last legend who didn't win the big one, Marv Levy. When you think of losing Super Bowls, no one else comes to mind but Marv Levy and the Buffalo Bills. The star-studded team of the early 90s went to four straight Super Bowls. Going back to the start of Levy, his first head coaching position came with the Montreal Alouettes in the Canadian Football League, where he won two Grey Cup titles. I bet you didn't know that, unless you're one of those Canadian nerds. He then went on to the Kansas City Chiefs before finding Buffalo. Between 1990 and 1993, the Bills went to all four Super Bowls, coming up short every single time. His best chance was against the Giants in 1990, but then he faced some OP teams after that. He ended his career with 11 playoff victories and four Super Bowl appearances, which are both the most for coaches to not win the big game. And while Marv Levy is in the Pro Football and Canadian Football Hall of Fames, he didn't win a Super Bowl. And if you're a Bills fan and you made it this far, why do you torture yourself like this? Why do you do this? I just want to know why.